People need to hear that, and they don't. They don't hear it anywhere, which is crazy. They hear it from a few places. But, but I look at like the Evans, you know, Black Rifle Coffee. And yeah. Mike Glover at Fieldcraft Survival. Johnny Primo at Course of Action. You know, Jack Carr from, you know, not just his sex as, success as an author, but also as a businessman. Like we could just go down the list of all of these guys that just grabbed the reins of their horse and started directing it in the thing that they were passionate about with discipline, a process, and hard work, those three things yet again, and look at where they are right now. And I'm like so proud to call them friends, but more importantly, I'm so proud that they're Americans because that's the idea. And it's not un, it's not this unattainable thing. Like you're calling it unattainable because you don't want to do the work necessary to be successful at it. Wasn't Mike Glover put on some very fucking bizarre list? Yeah, yeah, he was, he was called a um, radical extremist by because the FBI. Because he was telling people how that, to can food and pickle things that you should be prepared in case something goes south. Yeah, they, they how thought, bizarre is that? This administration would and will not call Hamas the radical extremist, violent extremist organization and terrorist organization that they are, but will call mega people radical insurrectionists. The the two party justice thing that we got going on right now that is dangerous for a republic mike glover is an amazing dude he served his country for 20 years you know he was my boss for a little bit on the special operations side we went to sniper school together um saved my butt in sniper school uh, do you know the story no dude okay not that I need to like talk about how amazing Mike Glover is, but he's an amazing human. Um, all those dudes, you know, Andy like and Mike Sorelli, like just great people. But so I'm I'm writing a book right now called The Purpose of Pain, and my sniper partner during sniper school, he is dealing with a bunch of stuff, trauma from his last deployment, and I am such a selfish little prick. I am more concerned about being like the number one shooter in the school than the, my brother that is next to me every single day, right? Like we're sitting here on a stock. I'm with him for 20, 30 hours at a time. And we're sitting here looking at the back of a tree. We're, t we're discussing every single thing, but I'm not listening into what he's actually telling me. And he's pouring it all out there because I'm too concerned with like, you know, being special forces sniper school honor graduate or something stupid that I was at the time. Ultimately, during the field shoot, which is a must pass event during sniper school in the middle of it, he stands up and he quits literally just stands up and says he, he makes a wind call in the opposite of the wind direction. So I see a left to right. So we should take the target, dissect it and hold into the wind. So the bullet travels and hit the target. Right. So I see a left to right and he gives me a right call. And I was like, Hey, hey man, give me a different call. You're missing this. And uh, he's like, I'm freaking out. And I see his eyes start like darting around and he's just like getting the pressure and he stands up. And he's like, I quit in the middle of sniper school. And uh, so the instructors are like, all right, Tim, you're out. I'm like, I'm not out. Like, I still got a shot. Such a selfish prick. I just want to go back to that 26 year old kid and just smash him in the face. Anyways. So I'm like, I'm going to graduate. I just need a bullet and a target. I could do it right now. Let me lay down. I'll make my own wind call. And they're like, this is sniper school. It's you and a partner. So they walk over to the people that have already shot and they say, hey, I need one person to volunteer for Tim with one target with one bullet. It's a go, no go. He gets a first round hit. He graduates. He misses. He's out of school. And this is to like the pool of people. Mike Glover's hand pops up. I, I know him. We're both in this special mission, like this uh, this unit called the CRIF, the CIF at the time, the Command Commanders and Extremist Force. It's a special operations, counterterrorism, hostage rescue unit within special forces. So, like, it's a very small pool of people. So I knew who he was. And his hand goes up. The instructor, check this, he goes, okay, what if your graduation depends on this shot? Mike's words wouldn't change my answer. I don't know him. I've never shot with him. He volunteers and effectively puts his graduation go, no go of special forces sniper school on me to come and lay down with me to make a shot. So they get me an M one, one, eight LR. It's a 175 grain match grade bullet for my 308. And they walk over and they go, here's your bullet. There's your target. So we measure it. We it's slightly over 700 meters. We get our wind call. 
We take the shot. And as the bullet travels, you see a thing called trace. It's the displacement of vapor in the air. And it looks like this laser beam. And when you're shooting really far, especially with a, a large kind of slower bullet, 2,600 feet per second for a 175 grain bullet and that you see this laser going directly towards the target. So the moment I press that trigger, Mike's like center, center hit before it even hits, right? Before we even see the impact of that 40 by 20 target and bing, you see the splash, but it takes three, four seconds for the sound of the impact to reach us. So like I see the trace, I know it's going to be hit. Mike stands up and he just starts walking off. Boom, in center impact. And they're like, where are you going? And he's like, with Tim as graduates, like no big deal, just volunteered to shoot with a dude that he has no, like that is the Mike Glover that I know. And that was the Mike Glover that was condemned, that has spent 20 years serving his country in the military and then spent an additional 10 years as a contractor working for the three letter agencies protecting America. And then they have the audacity to label somebody like that. It's infuriating. Has he been removed from that list? Um, I have, it was I'm, uh, it's odd that you asked me that because I've kicked, when I'm building these manifests to fly these people out of these countries, I want to make sure I'm bringing back good people, right? So we run, uh, we check to see if their names and their passport numbers and their date of births are on any lists where I wouldn't want to bring one of these people into the United States that's on a list. Um, I have a bunch of times, even in the past couple of weeks, I was like, man, I might just run Mike to see if he's still on there. Yeah. But then I didn't want to because I didn't want to like run a name and um, him to be on there or him not to be on there and then them to look at me to see that I ran his name unnecessarily. Oh, God. You know, 